7 o'clock this morning. Schools across Idaho are closing for the time being. What a soft closure extension means for students and teachers. And a Spokane video game staple has come up with a way to avoid closing down that also keeps their customers safe. We're giving you a look at this new pop-up game drive through And the 76-day lockdown in Wuhan, China is now over. Wuhan is, of course, known around the world as the city where the coronavirus pandemic first started. The city's 11 million people are now free to leave the city as long as they are healthy. So this morning, we want to know where is the first place you plan to go after our stay-at-home orders are lifted across Washington and Idaho. I'm joined by our team. Uh, we haven't checked in with Jen yet. Jen, where would you go uh, when, when the stay-at-home order is lifted? You know, I think when it's lifted, I'll probably make a trip home, go down to Walla Walla, see the family, get together. I think that's what we're missing. We all live here in the Inland Northwest, and we see each other fairly often. But with our stay-at-home orders, it's just been something we're not quite used to. So I think that's going to be my first trip. And, of course, Jen is going to join us a little bit later to also tell us more about the headlines surrounding the coronavirus here in the Inland Northwest. Dana Marie has a story about music that's going to be music to our ears. Dana Marie, where would you like to go? Oh my gosh, I think I just would love to go to a restaurant and be with my friends and, and have a drink and have a social happy hour. I, I miss doing that. Yeah, our, uh, one of our directors, Brandon, gave me a list of breweries a, for a few months ago that I haven't been able to check out yet, so I'm going to have to probably say that's my suggestion. And uh, as we check in with Evan for our Wednesday morning forecast, Evan, where would you like to go? Yeah, like Dana Marie said, restaurants, I think, mm -hmm. are a big part of it. Maybe like a concert or a sporting event where I, it's going to be definitely slower to come by, I think, once we start getting into those larger crowds. But uh, I just am an extrovert and I think need uh, to be outside and enjoying kind of those social activities. So I'm excited that once these uh, stay at home orders are lifted, we can enjoy that. Every time I'm watching TV and I see a sporting event or people at restaurants, I just think, Remember when that was the normal? <laughs> and so it's it's kind of tough to come by now, right? It'll come back, though. It'll come back. And especially if we have nice weather like this morning, it would be encouraging to go outside, right? That's right. We're sticking with the trend of pretty nice weather out there. We're going to see a warming trend and a drying trend occur. And I mean, satellite radar has been gorgeous over the last several hours. Haven't seen any problems on that front. What we have going into your Friday and Saturday presents a little bit of a change in the forecast that could mean a cold front arriving. But I'd say enjoy the weather between now, your Wednesday, midweek, and into your Friday, Thursday and Friday, because we're sticking with the trend of uh, beautiful conditions. Here's the day planner forecast. 54 by noon, 62 by 5 uh, afternoon highs in central Washington are going to make it to near 70 degrees. And on the three-day forecast, here's what we got. Warming up for your Thursday, warming up for your Friday. 70 is that forecast high here in Spokane for Friday. It'll seem like a summer day compared to what we were seeing last week with 40s as our highs. So I think it's a welcome sight to see those changes. Only downside is, of course, we do have that cold front that arrives just in time for the weekend. For now, I'll send things over to Jen York. Jen, uh, I think that's very exciting that, you know, you're kind of keeping your sights set on uh, the positive and going back home uh, once these stay-at-home orders are lifted. Yeah, I mean, I choose to live here in the Inland Northwest. Our jobs can take us all around the country, but I choose to live here because this is home. My family's here. We grew up in Eastern Washington, and so it's been a change for us not to be able to see each other. My, you know, this is uh, something totally new for uh, many of us. So I think that's going to be our yeah, first like order the, of business uh... is to go for it. It's like the all in this uh, where, you know, the inland together uh, branding that we've been going for is showing people that, you know, even when we're apart physically, we don't need to socially isolate. We can still interact and keep in touch and, and we're trying to do it just uh, for the betterment of everyone, right? Absolutely. So doing our part. And by the way, excellent forecast and your beard is coming in nicely. You get a gold star Thank for Thank you today. very much. I put some beard oil on it this morning because uh, it's been getting bigger and better. And I think that uh, by next week, we could be going for, you know, like that no shave November look that I had from a couple years ago. So uh, onward and upward from here, Jen. <laughs> Absolutely, Evan. Yeah, for our viewers who might not remember, Evan was our No Shave November beard winner. So you still have that title as of right now. Oh, I'm hanging on to it for as long as I can. This is No Shave uh, April at this point. 
<laughs> Fair enough. I think uh, a lot of people at home can relate to that. Evan, thank you so much. Well, here at Live in My Kitchen this morning, we do want to get to some headlines this morning. Here are three things you need to know this morning about coronavirus here on our Wednesday morning. And Washington Governor Jay Inslee is extending some help for local businesses. He announced several new measures aimed at helping small businesses. And those new measures include an emergency $5 million grant program. So businesses with fewer than 10 employees may qualify for the $10,000 grant. Governor Inslee also announced a business resiliency program. He says owners can receive help through accessing federal assistance through the U.S. Small Business Administration. It won't be small to them. It, it, it could be life changing. So I'm glad we're able to do this. But we are going to require much larger infusions and in investment in our state to really get our economy going. We certainly uh, recognize that. Now, Governor Inslee also acknowledged the importance of faith-based gatherings to people here in Washington. He says people really have to avoid these large gatherings right now to avoid deaths. Across state line this morning, Kootenai County Sheriff's deputies handed out dozens of citations to teenagers attending a party. It actually happened Monday night in Rathdrum. Deputies say about 30 people were in attendance. The party, of course, violated Idaho's stay-at-home order. And this is the first time the sheriff's office issued citations for violating the order. And some other charges are also related to drug use and others for underage drinking. Well, this morning, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention workers suggest everyone wear a mask in public. Experts say it's to help prevent the spread of coronavirus. They suggest making masks at home and letting health care providers have the proper equipment. Now, they recommend masks have layers of fabric and to do a light test. The more light you can see come through the fabric, the more particles can pass through it. Experts say a typical bandana filters out about 20% of particles. Other mask tutorials recommend durable, breathable fabric instead like cotton. And here's a look at our latest numbers this morning. The Spokane Regional Health District now reports a total of 227 confirmed coronavirus cases in Spokane County. Leaders say the virus is now linked to 13 deaths locally. The Washington Department of Health confirms 90 cases in Grant County, 75 in Franklin County, 12 in Whitman County, 10 in Okanagan County, and one in Lincoln County. Statewide, the Department of Health confirms more than 8,600 cases, and coronavirus is now linked to 394 deaths in Washington. And the hardest hit area, King County, has confirmed more than 3,400 cases. Across state line, the Idaho Health and Welfare Department confirms 15 deaths in the state and 1,200 cases. Kootenai County is reporting 42 cases. Bonner County has confirmed three cases. And experts there say one person is in the hospital. For now, Joshua, we'll send things back to you in studio. You have a look at some other headlines this morning. Thank you very much for joining us, Jen, here at 708 this morning on Up With Creme. You know, the kids still understand why they can't go to school, why they can't see their friends. All Idaho schools are now closed for the remainder of the year due to the coronavirus, but this is a soft closure. And our Nicole Hernandez is live this morning to explain what that term means for the remainder of the school year. Good morning, Nicole. Hey, good morning, Joshua. So as of Monday, Idaho State Board of Education extended the soft closure for Idaho schools, but that soft closure is different than the closure that we're seeing on the other side of state lines in Washington. So for Washington, their closure is just that, a closure for the rest of the school year. The rest of their year will be online, and the state is now getting ready for the start of the 2021 uh, school year in the fall. But for Idaho, their Monday decision means the state board could be reopening schools at some point during this school year. But here's the thing that would only happen if certain factors are met and the state board hasn't said what those are just yet. Plus, public health experts would also have to say it's safe to return to school. For now, some school districts have moved to online learning. The Post Falls School District has started remote learning and teachers are hosting remote office hours to keep up with their students progress. The teachers are trying to do as much as they can to help the students. The Coeur d'Alene School District started its remote learning plan yesterday. It involves teachers giving weekly tasks and activities for their students and being available remotely to help. 
but for now it's just about parents and teachers really working together to keep kids learning during this time when they're having to stay home. And also for now we're just kind of at a wait and see for what's going to happen uh, for some of these schools like Post Falls Middle School here as to whether or not they'll be reopening later this school year. Live in Post Falls, I'm Nicole Hernandez. Thank you very much for that update, Nicole. We appreciate it. 710 this morning here on Up With Krem. Time to check in once again with our own Dana Marie McNichol, who is bringing us some music that is sure to lift your spirits. Dana Marie, these are some of my favorite songs anyways. Yeah, Joshua, trending this morning is something that is so much fun. So Broadway casts from around the world are coming together from their own home to perform some of the greatest, most popular musics and musicals. You gotta take a listen, it speaks for itself. Do you hear the people sing? Lost in the valley of the night. It is the, the music of the people who are climbing to the light. For the wretched of the earth, there is a flame that never dies, even the dark. Well, you're listening to 70 cast members of the London Theatre's Les Miserables, and they're performing Do You Hear the People Sing? And if you recognize this song, you know that it just kind of boosts morale, and that's their goal, to remind people how much stronger we are when we work together to fight the virus. Well, cast members and musicians from Beautiful, the Carol King musical, collaborated from their homes around the world to record a socially distant version of You've Got a Friend. And this was to create awareness and raise funds for the Actors Fund. And that's a national human services organization for everyone in performing arts and entertainment, supporting those actors. Then a hurricane came and devastation reigned. Our man saw his future drip dripping down the drain. Put a pencil to his temple, connected it to his brain. And he wrote his first refrain, a testament to his pain. The word got around, they said this kid. And if you're a fan of Hamilton, you'll recognize that one. Lin-Manuel Miranda and the cast of Hamilton surprised a nine-year-old fan with a Zoom performance because she couldn't attend the performance in New York. And of course they invited her to see the show once everything reopens again. But it's so precious to see her reaction uh, to all the different actors and actresses kind of pop up on the screen and then come together and sing. What a unique way to, per to, to experience a Broadway performance. Probably one that we would never ever receive if we, if we weren't in this situation, right Joshua? Yes, yeah, she is all of us, Dana Marie. She is every single one of us that would love to see those performances. And I think the thing that stands out to me too is I, I used to sing like in choir and musicals and stuff and recording yourself is very tough. It's sort of, it's tough to, to make that same uh, energy from the stage translate and it doesn't seem like any of them are having any problem doing that. So I'm amazed by that, right? Exactly, that's what I was thinking, just how they're in their own home but they all come together and some of the actor and actresses have their kids in the background, um, their family members, and it just kind of shows that no matter where you are in the world, it's affecting everybody and uh, it's good to raise awareness as well for those actress and actress funds and musicians and just kind of give the love on social media to people that aren't able to perform their craft right now and I just love being able to enjoy it. I watched every single one. I was enamored. I'm gonna probably spend my afternoon doing that too. So what a great suggestion. Thank you for bringing that to us this morning here on Up With Creme, Dana Marie 714 now. And of course, a lot of people are also getting creative during the stay at home ordering. But one business, local business owner, is taking creativity to a different level. Coming up after the break, we will show you how he's working to keep his customers safe. We also understand that there's a lot of information about there about how to best protect yourself from the coronavirus. Coming up in our next half hour, we are verifying the latest updated information from health experts about wearing masks. But before we take a break, check this out. This is a video that's very be quickly becoming one of our favorites. As social distancing might keep us from seeing people outside of our homes, it's not stopping this man from busting his move, 97-year-old World War II Navy pilot showing he's still got it dancing along to Justin Timberlake's Can't Stop the Feeling. Take a look. 